Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sofian. Uh, most of my friends will call me Sof. Um, as you can see, my current location right now, I'm in Sydney, Australia. You got the uh, beautiful Sydney Opera House behind me and the Harbour Bridge, which is over this side. It's a beautiful day in Sydney and it's my last day. I'm, I'm here to announce I'm making a move, well, more like a temporary kind of move to Lisbon, Portugal. And I am excited for this move. Um, I've been, I travel a lot, quite a bit, and I lived in several places around the world. And of course, one of the places I live in is in Sydney, Australia. I really love it here, but it's time for a little bit of a new adventure. So um, I'm going over to Lisbon, Portugal, and I'm going to be staying there for a couple of months um, and try it out. I traveled there, went into that 2017 as a tourist and I was on my way to Morocco and I really and I decided to do a stopover in Lisbon. I really liked it there a lot and I decided uh, I fell in love after a couple of days. Um, so it, yeah it wasn't a real love at first sight but I learned to really like it a lot. I love the Portuguese language, I love the food, I love being in Lisbon and I feel very welcome over there. And um, so I decided to give it a go and uh, try to live in Lisbon for a couple of months and see how it goes. I'd like to take you on an adventure on my experience living in Lisbon and what it's like. And um, yeah, so come and join me on this journey and I'll see you in Lisbon in a short while. Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to this week's episode. So for this week, it's not a cooking episode but somewhat a reflective one. So yes, I am now almost two years to my life in Lisbon, Portugal. So I moved here in December 2020 and it's almost coming to two years. I can't believe how time flies. And I thought I want to share a little reflection of what I've done over the past two years. And you know, this is serves as a documentation for myself, but also is something for, for my listeners and my viewers to know what I've been doing for the past few years since I moved over to Portugal. This episode shares my highs and lows, my ups and downs about moving to Portugal. And let's get started how I came about you know, coming to Portugal. So in December 2017, Portugal was actually a place that I never planned to move. It was just a place where I was, uh, I did a stopover when I was traveling to Morocco and I had some time and I decided to spend a week in Portugal. So my, you know, I was flying with Tech Portugal, so I thought, why not? So the first destination was Lisbon. When I came here, I ne had no intentions at all. I hated the first night when I was in Lisbon. I thought it was a grotty, grungy city. It wasn't clean. And uh, I just like, no, I don't think, I kind of miss Morocco. And, but throughout the uh, next few days, I started to explore uh, Portugal, I went to Sintra, I went to Porto, and went around places, and then I learned to like Portugal. I remember on my last day, I walked around uh, the city centre, I walked to Alfama, all the way down to Intendent, which is where I am, and then I sat on the square, and I realised that, you know, I really like Portugal, and I thought to myself, oh, wouldn't it be nice to live in this country? So that's how it all started, with no intentions at all. And then six months later, I came to Portugal again for a visit and I really enjoyed my trip during the summer over here and I thought this could be a possibility. However, also at the same time, things were running in my mind. You know, if I want to move over here, what am I going to do? I thought to myself, I don't want to be working for a company. I knew that, you know, I want to be, I want to do my own business, but I just couldn't think of what I wanted to do. But also at the same time, I was investigating, to, you know, trying to see if I might like Lisbon. I was going to, I uh, was trying out some Asian restaurants to see if I might like the Asian food. I was doing grocery shopping around uh, Asian supermarkets to see what uh, products and produce they have. I thought, you know, it was rather basic. Um, well, compared to where I lived in Sydney. But also at the same time, I thought, you know, at least they have the minimum stuff that I need. I thought, okay, this could be possible. And being an avid foodie and also a history fan, I was also looking for the connections between Portugal and Malacca. But to my disappointment, there was hardly any mention about the connection. It was uh, Portugal talked more about their connections with Africa and Brazil, but there was hardly any mention of Malacca. 
So I felt there was this lack and I want to create this awareness. So that's where I had this idea about, you know, starting workshops to create this awareness, the link between Portugal and Southeast Asia, how Portugal has influenced Southeast Asia in many ways through culinary links and so through, you know, intermarriage and all the cultures that they, they brought over to Asia. However, at the same time, I was also kind of wary whether Portugal was the right decision. I was really comfortable living in Australia, I, but I saw this potential in Portugal and I, I decided that why not I do a trial move for three months to see if it's possible. So the initial plan was to move in um, summer of 2019, which is June 2019. But then it didn't happen and then I wanted to uh, plan, I planned to move in October 2019 but th that also didn't happen. So finally when things uh, were able to uh, start moving again it was March 2020. But of course we all know what happened during that time. I remember I was in uh, Dubai at that time uh, and I was ready to make the move and I got the green light and then New Zealand, you know, things were starting to get a bit more worrying about the pandemic situation. And New Zealand made a law where any travelers coming to New Zealand, they have to do a 14 uh, stay home quarantine. So it was a matter of time I knew Australia would follow suit. So I had to act really fast. And within 24 hours, I booked my ticket and flew back to Australia. So while in Australia, I was having doubts about my move to Portugal, whether it was coming to reality because things were just not going right and then the situation wasn't, get any, wasn't getting any better. Today is coming in here to do the shout out. Today's shout out is to Safian, who is stranded in Sydney right now. And we used to live in Sydney, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah so it's I kind of know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're okay there. And things get back to normal for you soon. Hope you enjoyed today's video. So I decided to share, just shelve the idea for the moment and focus on my time in Australia. And then later on, around the second half of the year, the borders were getting more relaxed. And then I thought, okay, maybe it's time for me to start re-exploring this idea again. I did some research and I felt that I can't just go into Portugal with my tour, on my tourist visa. So the only other way is actually to get the resident visa or a right to live in Portugal, uh, at least for a few years. So um, the only reason why is that because if I were to live, uh, if I were to live in Portugal on a tourist visa, then when I come back to Australia, I have to be quarantined for two weeks in a hotel, and I don't want to do that. And also, I don't, I don't think it was worth paying that amount of money. I did some research, uh, and I called the consulate, the Portuguese consulate in Sydney, made a few inquiries, and then finally, I thought the V2 visa was my best option. So I took about two weeks to gather all my information. And, and so write my business proposal and then ask some friends to have a look and see if it's okay and if it's sound enough. And um, I just want to make sure that I got it right for the first time reading, then getting it rejected and then having to do it again. Um, so I make sure that I cover all, all the grounds and then I submitted, I remember I submitted my visa on a Tuesday morning and then I got the answer on the Friday afternoon and that was a yes. So I was really ecstatic about it. So it's 1.22 p.m. Um, and the 2nd of October, I just arrived at the Portis Embassy at 55 Clarence Street. And it's been a bit delayed only because of the, uh, the Chancellor is arriving a bit later than expected. But I'm excited. I'm going to collect my visa soon and get it. Um, I'm going to get a sticker on my passport. So I'm so looking forward to this. It's a, it's a life turning point for me. So yeah, wish me luck. Um, so yeah, it was really exciting at this, uh, when I got the news, but so at the same time it was like, oh, you know, this is getting real. And uh, what do I do now? Because I think on my mind, I was prepared to make the move, but in reality, the thought of packing items and doing the home renovation and also, you know, saying goodbye to people was, you know, was quite overwhelming. But I managed to persevere. I did what I can and I, I packed as much as I could, uh, you know, for my move. Yeah, so this is Goodbye Australia and Hello Lisbon, or shall I say in Portuguese, Adeus Australia, Hola Lisboa. I'll see you guys soon. So various emotions appeared. 
I was feeling excited and about the prospect of moving to Portugal. Also, I was feeling sad because I say goodbye to my old life in Australia and I say goodbye to, the, to my friends and I just do not know whether things will work out. So it was a big question mark, but it was a risk that I knew I had to take. It was, to, it was just to do it and I told myself, I'll give it about two years and see how it goes. So I finally moved to Portugal on December. I arrived in Portugal on December the 9th, 2020. It was a weird period because it took me, you know, I had to fly direct. Uh, it was a 25 hour flight to uh, Portugal. I couldn't transit in uh, Dubai because, you know, of the, of the quarantine laws. And by the time I arrived in Portugal, I was just shattered. <laughs> It took me about it took me almost two weeks to uh, you know get settled down and get used to the time zone over here. I was feeling jet lagged every single day uh, yeah, for about two weeks. So uh, and then so it was a weird time because I moved from a place where it was almost COVID free and we didn't have to wear masks and we didn't have to worry about uh, getting COVID to coming to a COVID zone in Portugal where everybody had to wear masks. There was restrictions and, and everything going on. And then, you know, a month later, it was locked down. Oh my, that was depressing because I needed to get paperwork done before my immigration interview with Seth. And it was hard. It was really a hard time and a lonely time, to be honest. I was on my own. I had no friends. I had no network around here. I was totally on my own. Um, yeah, it was a tough time trying to get some paperwork done. I think at, this, at that time, there were no tourists, so everyone spoke Portuguese and then, you know, civils, in the civil service, uh, you know, they have this expectation that I'm, I should be able to speak Portuguese the moment I leave the aircraft, but of course it's not possible when, you know, then, you know, certain documents needed some people to verify, but, you know, I don't know anyone at all, so it was very tough. And uh, to make things worse, my immigration interview was cancelled. Um, it was a bit of a panic button, but um, you know, it wasn't too bad after all because it just gave me more time to to get uh, my documents settled, like in bank accounts, get my uh, my tax number, and so on and so forth. Um, but you know, I persevered. I kept asking and asking and kept going to different sources. Finally, I managed to get everything sorted out two weeks before my immigration appointment, so I was very happy about that. And um, yeah, I think there was lots of frustration at that time, and I was thinking, oh gosh, you know, is it worth you know, moving over to this country because it's so bureaucratic and, uh, you know, everyone has a different answer, no one has a standard answer. And I can safely say that this is very much, you know, a lot of uh, expats experience this. I'm not the only one. And um, and then when when the borders were you know reopened, I I managed to make make new friends, and that made a whole difference. So finally, my immigration appointment was made, and it was approved. I had two years for my visa to live to have the right to live in this country. And I thought, okay, maybe that's also a good time to gauge you know whether I enjoy living in Portugal or not. If I don't like it, by the end of two years, I'll go back home to Australia or even Singapore. Then after my immigration appointment, I thought it was the right time to start doing my workshops. I was uh, I held my workshops on Airbnb experiences uh, regarding the, the spice routes from uh, between Portugal and the Far East and the culinary influences they had. So the workshop started all small, and of course you know you know being a new business, I didn't have many customers or many uh, you know workshop attendees, but it slowly grew. And also at the same time, I had encouragements from people, you know, asking me that I should start my own supper club events. Um, it was hard for me because I was struggling, you know, with the imposter syndrome. It's like I knew I'm not a trained chef, and I, I felt I was just an okay cook. Um, but you know, through persistence and um, and also people encouraging, I just thought, okay, maybe I'll give one or two events a go. And see if it works. And people doesn't. If people don't like my food, I'll just you know stop it. And uh, it was nerve wracking for sure. And I was struggling. Um, but you know, my first. I remember my first dining experience in right in this apartment just behind over here. Um, I had um, I had six people coming in. Uh, we had some Singapore food. I felt it was a success, and I felt you know I did okay. 
um, and then that gave me some confidence to do more events and I just thought initially I'm just going to do mainly just Singapore food. A few weeks later, I met uh, this lady called Ploy, who's Thai and she's a chef based in Qashqai. Uh, so we met up for coffee and uh, we enjoyed chatting with, with each other and she approached me with the idea of doing a Thai cooking workshop. No, more like a Thai uh, eating dining experience at this apartment. And I said yes, uh, only because I did some Thai cooking workshops when I used to travel to Thailand. And uh, so I kind of know the cooking, uh, the basic cooking principles, and I was confident enough to, to give it a go. And uh, with the success of the event, that was how I started Sawi Session Supper Club. So I just thought, hey, you know, why don't I, I not only just do the food I know, but also showcase food that's not available in Lisbon restaurants especially in the Asian restaurants and uh, to, to create this awareness to share with people you know Southeast Asian food is not just Chinese food you know there's more to, to it you know there's, there's regional foods from, from different states in Malaysia or even Indonesia there's also like national food there's also like um, food that you know people don't see in the restaurants so that was my idea to create this awareness and share this uh, you know this love for food so slowly my confidence grew and then you know I thought you know maybe it might be time to do pop-up events out around Lisbon and I was exploring the idea in February this year I started my first pop-up event for which is Chinese New Year and I had about 20 people coming to my events so I was actually very surprised it was full house and I also was scared at the same time because I've struggle cooking for four people, let alone struggle, struggle cooking for 20 people. But I did it and they gave me a lot of confidence and people really enjoyed the experience. So I'm really thankful for, for that. So that, you know, gave me more confidence to do more things. And I thought, okay, let's do more than that. Let's try to collaborate with other chefs. So since the event, I've been approached by chefs to collaborate together. And so I've been approached by restaurants and cafes to do some pop-up events over there. And I just thought, you know, well, this is kind of amazing. I'm really surprised. I can, I can do it. I can really cook, and I read, and people enjoy my food. And sometimes I can't even believe that, you know, this is what I cook. But you know, I'm thankful for all the opportunities. And I collaborated with one of the uh, Singapore chef based in Porto. Her name is Wailing, and we we did a pop up in uh, pop Cuisina Popular de Muraria. Um, and we served Singapore food and that was really a success. We, you know, we had almost full house for both nights. Uh, so yeah, really thankful for that and thankful people really enjoyed the food. And there was, you know, not much of a problem in terms of uh, getting things organized. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I must say I'm quite surprised at myself how, you know, how well I, I'm able to not only cook but also to organize events. So, uh, you know, so, you know, pat them back for that. <laughs> And then uh, later in July, um, you know, I met this uh, chef, Portuguese chef, Chef Ricardo. I was actually his customer in this restaurant when he was uh, planning to close down. So my friends talked about him and then we say that, and I said, okay, you know, I'd love to come and, you know, try out his food and see what it's like. So I came to his restaurant without having, having, without having any intentions at all. And um, yeah, and then we, you know, we didn't really talk much because, you know, he was busy running a restaurant. And when he closed his restaurant, he had a private event and I joined because I was interested to find out more about him. Uh, I was told that he was planning to write a book about Portuguese cuisine and I was interested to find out what he's, he was planning to write. And I met him and uh, yeah, we had a conversation and then we, he came for my event. He really liked my food. Um, and uh, and then we we thought okay let's meet up for coffee and talk more about you know just talk about our, our ideas basically um, then from sharing of ideas we we began to to explore opportunities it's like hey you know why don't we start working together and maybe let's start off with this event um, because I was sharing it with him my personal research on the Portuguese culinary links to Southeast Asia. And he was also fascinated with, with that bit. And then we thought, well, let's try out this event. And we call it Lusu Nusantara. And I thought that was a perfect uh, fit. You know, uh, yeah, it's a bit mouthful, but then I thought it was a perfect fit because it really literally just, you know, says about the food that we, are cook, we cook. 
and uh, you know we did volume one and that was a success in its own right um, then we are definitely planning to do more volumes uh, more events in the future and uh, yeah since that event itself it has opened up even more doors so I was approached by uh, Festa Crayola and uh, we did we did a pop-up uh, market over there it was a success it was we were very surprised I think initially I was actually worried about you know whether people might you know this poetas might embrace you know this different kind of empanadas or pashtaish called epo epo it may look similar to the portuguese pashtaish but then the flavors are totally different it's curry it's curry based and you know i have two different pashtaish uh, one is sardin curry puff and one is the potato curry puff and um yeah i was a bit initially worried we both were initially worried but we were surprised the turnout actually was all right you know, we was we went well. We didn't sell everything to be honest, but you know, eighty percent sold. I think that's a good indicator for for a start. Also, Ricardo has made some connections with Mercado Benfica, and that has proved useful because now they they approach us and they invited us to do a market on a Friday night on December sixteen in Mercado Benfica, and I thought, wow, this is an exciting you know opportunity. And so with that, you know, we also been approached by other markets to do, you know, market events on weekends. I'm saying yes to that because I just thought we got to try all different kinds of things. And because you just never know, you know, you might like something. You have to try. You you have to. You might like something. You might not like like something. You might feel that might work. This event might work. That event might not work. And you choose your battles after that, and because you have all the experience. So yeah, I must say that you know the past two years, it has been a really life-changing journey. I've learned a lot, you know, in the last few years. In the last two years, you know, I got out of my comfort zone. It was it really threw me off. I was you know in a place where I thought I would fail, and I I just thought, you know, this is never going to work. With perseverance and keeping my goals on track. I realized that you know things move slowly but surely, and it really has. And you know I must say that I from something that I wasn't expecting, having the imposter syndrome, that I could never cook, I can only do workshops. So now I'm cooking for up to sixty people, which is a big achievement for me. And I just it's just something I never expected. I took that challenge. It got me out of my comfort zone, and I'm really pleased that you know I. Took that challenge and and I, I it worked out. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So yeah, I this has been a very interesting journey, and now it's coming to almost two years to my time in Portugal. So you know now I guess the deadline has come, and will I continue staying in Portugal? I guess the only natural answer is going to be yes. So I'm looking forward to all these opportunities that's coming up in 2023. You know it's going to be fun. It's going to be fantastic. And it's going to be all positive, and I'm glad I'm here in Portugal to make this difference, you know, to show to you know to these puretas, to people living here, that you know Southeast Asian food is more than just Chinese food, and you know I'm creating this awareness, create uh, giving education to people, sharing all the goodness of you know, Southeast Asian food and culture to to everybody here and everybody who has attended to my events. So yeah, so I must thank, you know, there are people I want to thank. I know it sounds like an Oscar, you know, Oscar award, but I am really grateful for the people who are in my life who has, you know, helped me grow and helped me to see things sometimes that I had missed out. So, you know, of course, the first people I met over here in Lisbon were Rod and Daniel. So thank you very much for, you know, for your friendship and all these opportunities. You know, Paul for guiding me throughout this whole few months and so being there when I when I needed to talk to someone. Um, then also my family who were there supporting me even though they may not understand what I'm going through or what I do over here. But you know, having the support really makes a difference. And so like, yeah, and so my friends in Australia and some friends in Singapore who kind of knew what I do. I share with people who, who support the idea of, of me. I know it wasn't easy for sure coming to Australia, getting out of this comfort zone, doing something really crazy. But, you know, I feel that it was the right time. It was the right thing to do. And I'm thriving in it. So guys, yeah, you know, so thank you very much everybody for your support. And thank you all my diners for coming for my events. I really appreciate for your support. I really appreciate your support, especially for those who come every month, every month, or, or almost every month for my events. 
you know, Stacy, Jeff, Brett, Catherine, thank you so much. You know, thank you for all, all your support. So guys, thanks very much for watching this episode and thanks very much for coming this far. So if you are in Lisbon, why not head up to meet up and come and join my Southeast Asian Supper Club. It's more than just food, but also share stories with the food. And so you get to eat in, the, in this comfort space over here in my own home and so in some pop, in a great pop-up venues. And for, those, for the rest of you, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care and ciao ciao. <laughs>